What country on our planet do you think is capable of surprising, shocking, and even frightening at the same time? Today, we are going to have a journey through North Korea. This is a mysterious land where every step is under control and the truth often remains behind the scenes. Imagine a world where every smile and look can be part of some kind of disguise. Are you ready to look behind this iron curtain and find out what one of the most closed countries in the world hides? We will reveal all the secrets of North Korea, which few people know about, and show how people live in conditions of complete isolation and control. Get ready! What do you think can unite all the inhabitants of the country? In North Korea, this is manure collection. Yes, due to the acute shortage of fertilizers, every citizen has made a contribution to the agricultural security of the country. Imagine the government even launches contests for the best collector. What can I say? Such an unconventional measure reflects the serious resource problems faced by the DPRK due to the imposed international sanctions. In North Korea, the worship of leaders is not just a tradition, it's the law of life. Can you imagine that portraits of the Kim family are literally watching you from every corner of every house? Do you want to step back from the party line? No, it's better to not take any chances. For any disagreement, people can be sent to places where rest is work, while their family will get a bonus in the form of isolation. This is a real theater of the absurd, where everyone plays the role of a loyal citizen. Even a whisper there can cost real freedom. And yet there is a special unit in the country. This is a secret women's army designed to participate in marches and parades. These women, carefully selected for their beauty and grace, are a key element of the state's visual propaganda. They demonstrate the power and unity of the country, but behind their brilliant performances and polished movements, unfortunately, there is complete subordination and strict discipline. What can we say about barbed wires at the borders? After all, it's not just a fence, but a symbol that there is no escape from there. Their sinister twists seem to whisper, there is no further way. They guard the borders with iron strictness, not allowing the slightest thought of freedom. If you're inside, your place has already been determined, and dreams of a world beyond these sharp spirals remain only dreams. Here is a visual confirmation of my words. You know, in North Korea, old radios are not just retro chic, but real control tools. Just imagine, every radio is factory programmed to work only with state channels. What if you try to switch? But that's not the case. It's like constantly listening to just one song in a playlist, but it's about the greatness of your leadership. Is it dramatic? It definitely is. They also have an ingenious system for maintaining correct thoughts. Have you ever noticed how martial arts turned into a true blockbuster in the DPRK? That's where there are really no boundaries for drama. As you can see, the military, like superheroes, smash wooden planks and stone slabs no worse than characters from comics. This is not some kind of show-off, but a whole test of spirit and body, where every blow literally says, look what we're capable of. In the arena, everything is like in the movies, but behind the scenes, you can witness tough training and iron discipline. When was the last time you saw a school without any technology? Forget about smartphones and interactive whiteboards, because the classrooms here seem like a museum of the past. Old textbooks and methods that have been tested over time. Can you imagine what it's like to study from a book that your grandfather could have used? But the most amazing thing is that these younger guys firmly know every line by heart. They repeat it every single day. Do you know that in North Korea, men have to get a haircut every 15 days? Yes, fashion is not just fashion, but strict regulations. What's the reason for this? The belief is that short hair prevents the loss of essential nutrients from the brain. To say that the government brazenly encroaches on the most personal aspects of the lives of its citizens is to simply say nothing. Have you ever wondered where your donations go in North Korea? Well, this is not an ordinary charity. Here, every contribution made quickly turns into financial support for not quite ordinary needs. 
From Kim Jong-un's personal banquets to his nuclear missile hobbies, money can end up in the most unexpected places. The end of the 90s in North Korea was marked by a difficult campaign, a dark time of mass famine when the country, having lost external support and suffered from floods, lost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives. Today is a different time, however the problem of hunger has not gone away. It still remains relevant, so every day here can be a struggle for survival. What would you say about a place that could rather be called a kind of culinary oasis in the desert of monotony? We're talking about the only pizzeria in the whole country. It was opened by the personal decree of Kim Jong-il in the late 90s after he was inspired by pizza during his trips abroad. Pizza is prepared there according to all the canons, and the ingredients for it as they say are sometimes delivered specifically from abroad. Yes, it is a true culinary adventure for those few who can afford it or get permission to visit. Have you ever heard of model schools in North Korea? These are not the kind of cute institutions where they teach you how to walk on the catwalk. Here, being a model means being perfect and exemplary. In such schools, every lesson is a step towards excellence in singing, sports, and study under the strict supervision of teachers. Kids learn to be exemplary citizens from childhood, and each of them is a future ideal brick in the foundation of the country. Poor little shoulders will suffer from such a load. It's scary to even think about it, but in North Korea, every fourth resident of it wears a military uniform. You might think that this is a mega casting for the largest scale war film, but no, this is reality. It's even a strategy. 22% of the national budget is spent on the army. These are not numbers, but a state priority that turns the country into one huge military camp. Now think about how this affects the life of every resident. When all those millions are not invested in schools or hospitals, but in tanks and missiles. There are rumors that Kim Jong-un not only inherited power, but also tried to take the features of his famous grandfather through plastic surgery. Just think about what a cinematic plot is. The leader of a country who seeks not only to copy the political course, but also to mimic the face of his predecessor. They say it took five years of campaigning to convince the nation of the authenticity of his image. Truth or fiction? Who knows? By the way, soldiers have a lot of prohibitions in the army, and sleeping on duty is one of them. This photo of a sleeping soldier still shows the other side of the army a certain moment of weakness because of which both the soldier and the photographer could be in trouble. I really hope that the outcome of the events did not turn out to be so tragic. What do you know about female traffic controllers in North Korea? They're the real heroines of the street ballet show. Each of them has passed a tough audition for endurance and elegance. Yes, they manage traffic in any weather, but they do it with such grace that the cars seem like some kind of obedient puppets. After the service, they will have a lot of career prospects. The reality for unmarried mothers and their children in North Korea is so cruel that it seems somehow absurd. If a woman is not married, she faces almost insurmountable obstacles. She is forbidden to register the birth of a baby. This means that the child has neither legal protection nor access to basic public services, including vaccinations and nutrition. So every new life there begins with a struggle for survival. In North Korea, the contrast between the image of a successful nation that the regime seeks to show and the reality of the lives of ordinary citizens is simply striking. Behind the facade of the glittering parades and perfectly clean streets of Pyongyang, there are terrifying slums where many people live. These areas are far from the well-being depicted. The houses here are often dilapidated, made of improvised materials, without proper access to clean water and stable electricity. Local residents are struggling with poverty amid acute shortages of food and basic life resources, which contrasts with the official picture where everyone seems prosperous and successful. Have you ever wondered why houses in North Korea are built in such a lazy and light manner? 
The secret is simple. High quality materials and technologies are literally worth their weight in gold. What is the result? They create buildings which will collapse during the first natural disaster. By following the government's desire to save money, builders create buildings that set records not in beauty and durability, but in the rate of wear. Shopping here is also not for everyone. Can you see that the mall is almost empty? No, there are a lot of customers here, it's just that the entrance here is open only to the elite. Imported treats, chic outfits, gadgets straight from the factory, all this is a luxury available only to a select few. While some only dream of such purchases, others are already choosing the best for themselves. Not bad, right? That's just too much emphasis on the deep social division in the country, especially when you look at such photos. Believe it or not, the North Korean government has its own personal and very unusual leisure unit. It is called the Kipiumjo Brigade. This is not about banal campfire songs. In fact, it is a real elite division of 2,000 girls whose task is to entertain the company's top leadership in every possible way. Joining the group is comparable to getting into Hollywood, no less. There are numerous checks, selections, and training. In addition to songs and dances, beauties also perform more intimate duties. But the most amazing thing is the strictest secrecy and control. After the service, the participants can get housing, a car, and even a husband, but at the cost of silence. I wonder what other evidence you need. What is this long queue of people stretching for a kilometer? Each of them is standing in line, waiting for their bus. People here wait for hours, sometimes whole mornings and evenings, to grab a seat on the crowded bus. Each ride is a real battle for a place and a test for nerves. True, you can still get to work by bike, but even here there is a certain limitation. Men here are free to pedal on their way to work, but that's about politics and tradition. But what about the women? Well, the fact is that many of them simply do not know how to ride the two-wheeled assistance. It's not because they can't learn, but rather because of social and cultural constraints. Have you heard anything about illegal markets? In North Korea, these are not just retail outlets, but whole islands of freedom in an ocean of strict rules. Here, between warehouses and narrow alleys, life boils full of trade in everything imaginable. From homemade sweets to electronics, almost everything can be found in the illegal markets. Even though they are technically in semi-legal status, the government sometimes turns a blind eye to this. Otherwise, how can ordinary citizens survive in conditions of shortages of goods in stores? A gloomy, shadowed prison interrogation room, with each question asked, the atmosphere becomes more tense. This is not just staged footage, but someone's terrifying reality. It is not surprising that every response and look of the prisoners there is full of fear and despair. The punishment can be very cruel. When the day comes to mark the passing of Kim Il-sung, domestic grief in North Korea turns into a commitment. Kim Jong-un has introduced a strict rule. On this day, everyone should mourn his father. Even years after that very day, anyone caught behaving inappropriately on that memorable day risks ending up in prison or even facing the death penalty. This footage is blurred, but let me explain. The video shows prisoners facing a harsh choice. While some risk 10 years of hard labor, others face an even darker fate of execution. These are not scenes from their dramatic movie, but the brutal reality of Kim Jong-un's rule, where public punishments are part of everyday life. Rumor has it that even the leader's own uncle was executed in a similar manner. On the streets of the provinces of North Korea, far from the splendor of the capital, you can meet people like this young woman. They are homeless, dirty, hungry, and left without support. I can say that her image reveals a true face of a country where life outside Pyongyang is riddled with poverty and despair. Many homeless people also hide their family ties so that their relatives do not suffer from possible reprisals for minor crimes, such as food theft, for example. Just look at these poor children living in the shadow of the abandoned streets of North Korea. Their emaciated faces and dull eyes speak more than any words. 
There are children for whom every new day is a survival and a struggle for life. There is no easy way to find a better life in their world, and any attempts to escape are fraught with catastrophic consequences. A world where childhood has been replaced by hard work. No, I'm not joking now, because North Korean children are not just obliged to help adults, they become full-fledged workers from an early age. Instead of school desks, there are fields, factories, and construction sites. Playing with friends has been replaced by endless hours of work, which is hard even for adults. Do you know what the most ironic thing is? This is happening in a country that loudly declares that education should be in the first place for children. The classified video perfectly reveals the lives of young female soldiers of North Korea who were mobilized to install wire barriers. Such barriers are not just metal, they keep people inside Kim Jong-un's paradise. Teenagers in military uniforms, effectively turned into slaves of the system and doing hard work, are literally deprived of freedom and hope. That's what they have instead of a happy youth. Just look at these men in uniform. Once law enforcement officers, now they are simple workers. This is not a punishment, but a cunning move by the government. In North Korea, men in uniform are tasked with policing public order, but overnight, they can be seen shifting bricks and wielding shovels. The thing is that the government uses everything and everyone at hand to strengthen its economy and infrastructure. Is it effective? It definitely is. Honestly? Well, only you can decide. Let's end with the Korean demilitarized zone of 250 kilometers, which clearly demonstrates the tense peace between North and South Korea. The relationship between them is not easy. It is a constant balance between diplomacy and readiness for conflict. But the strangest thing is that tourists are sometimes taken here, and they can even take a rare photo under the strict control of a considerable number of soldiers in uniform. And our episode has come to an end, and we hope that you enjoyed watching this video. We look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you for always being with us.